This is a very good question and it has inspired a whole research field in the last 30 years or so. And uh, this question can be addressed at least from two uh, major perspectives. Uh, one of them is the developmental perspective that is concerned with uh, what happens uh, during infancy and early childhood when actually infants and children, they learn the sound categories and uh, how they are represented perceptually and how they are produced. And uh, this question can be also addressed from a second language uh, acquisition perspective uh, that is concerned with what happens with adults when they start to learn a, a new language. Uh, I'm going to talk about the developmental perspective and Clara is uh, going to talk about uh, what happens with adults. So infancy is a, a very important period when it comes to uh, speech production and speech perception. Uh, clearly because this is the time uh, when we start to learn to speak and we start to understand uh, language around us. So um, in the first five, six years of life, uh, infants and uh, toddlers, they learn a lot about the uh, sound categories of their native languages. Uh, for example, by the end of the first year, uh, infants, uh, they know about all the vowels and consonants uh, that are phonemic in their native uh, language. So the first uh, year um, of an infant life really determines uh, what sound categories will be later available in adulthood. So by the end of the first year, infants, they lo learn a whole deal about the characteristics of all the phonemic categories that are available in their native language. For instance, French babies, uh, they become familiar with the acoustic characteristics of uh, the native French R sound, and they don't pay attention anymore to uh, what constitute, constitutes acoustically to a uh, Spanish R, for example. And then later on, uh, after the first uh, year of life, uh, infants spend like four or five years, or toddlers, they spend four or five years on just learning how to produce these sounds. So, um, because speech production is a very complex process that has to take place in a very short amount of time, so it is even a difficult process when it comes to producing your, uh, uh, the speech sounds that belong to your native language. So you can imagine how difficult it is to do to learn this uh, process again when you are an adult and learn this um, when you have to s pronounce speech sounds that belong to another language. So uh, to keep uh, the answer short, it is difficult for an adult uh, to produce a uh, non-native speech sound in adulthood because they didn't learn it uh, during uh, infancy and childhood. So as Monica has said, uh, when we learn a language as a baby and a child, uh, we learn to focus our attention only on the sounds of our native language and um, our auditory system gets expert in uh, recognizing and uh, processing, perceiving the sounds of the native language and also the production system. Uh, so uh, the oral cavity, the larynx, the tongue, the teeth and all this system gets expert in producing uh, the sounds of the native language and we just do not pay attention at all to all the sounds of the environment that do not exist in our native language. And then at some point as an adult if we want to learn a second language we have suddenly to start paying attention to these sounds that we were ignoring for such a long time. So that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to learn the sounds of a second language. And there are too many reasons why it's, it's difficult. First of all, um, there are some sounds in a foreign language that you can perceive but you cannot produce. So one example of that is um, in French. There is no uh, two different sounds for R. There is not R and R as the double R. So for French people like me, it makes it very difficult to pronounce these two, these two words pero and pero with the double R, even if we can perfectly perceive the difference between the two sounds. So in that case, you perceive the difference, but your brain doesn't know which is the command to be sent to the articulatory system to pronounce and produce properly the, the sound that you perceive. And the other case, even more interesting, 
is that it happens that you cannot produce the sounds of a, native, uh, sorry, of a second language because you cannot even perceive these sounds. And one example of that is uh, that in Japanese, there is the two sounds, R and L, does not exist, do not exist. Uh, so when uh, you speak, a, a Spanish native speak to a Japanese uh, person, this person will not be able to perceive the difference between rana and lana, for instance. It just perceives exactly the same word twice. So in that case, as you cannot perceive the difference between two sounds, you cannot even produce the two different words. Uh, and to conclude, it's important to keep in mind that all these difficulties in learning a second language, uh, there is a huge variability between individuals. So some people, uh, when learning a second language, um, can perceive and produce all the sounds of this second language very fast. They get to it in a few weeks or months. And sometimes it's not possible and some people never get to a good pronunciation of a second language even after years and years of practice.